Um, tonight I want to I mention a book called Love Is. This is the third in a series of books. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually talk about this somewhere else on, on the channel, um, the Truly Helpful channel. But um, I'm going to do a song right now from the book that, that definitely, because um, the book is really uh, based on A Course in Miracles. And uh, I'm going to do a little song and then we'll, we'll uh, start the reading. <clears throat> Everyone knows what love is. Still it seems nobody knows just what love is. Do you know what love is? It's probably not what you think that love is Cause just when you think you know what love is It almost definitely is not what love is In human terms we know not what love is While in our divine essence we rest in that lovelessness Everyone knows what love is. Um, so, um, I want to also just tell a quick joke. <laughs> um, how do you know that your eyes are teachers? Uh, you know, because they have, uh, they have pupils. And uh, if you are an eternal student, um, you will live longer. It's a proven fact. Um, why? Because pupils dilate. <laughs> and um, and if you um, if you learn your lessons, your lessons will lessen, um, and you will live more and more stress free. Living more and more stress free you will be, um, uh, you will live longer <laughs> and happier and more fulfilled. Um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And um, I believe that, that um, that's what this teaching is, is getting, getting us to, is, is to, um, to, to recognize that we do not have to live with the, the guilt and the fear and the depression and, 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 you know, the stress and the suffering. And, and we don't have to put that on other people either. And we can, um, we can at least um, help those around us to be more at peace. And um, well, really, actually, we can at least help ourselves to be more at peace. And that will, that will um, help everyone else. Today we're going to do, um, we're, we're in chapter two, uh, it's called the separation and the atonement. So it's talking about this chapter, is talking a lot about um, how the separation, what is the separation and, and how did it happen and um, what is the atonement. And the atonement is an interesting um, idea, um, the, the, the essential um, Thing. When we think of atonement, we we think of um, first of all the biblical idea, which was to atone for sin first through um, animal sacrifices, um, and then um, that that Jesus died to atone for the sins of humanity, um, and anyone that 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 believes in Jesus will. Um, will have eternal life with him. And um, the the Course's use of, of atonement is different though. Um, it, it basically is the idea of atonement without sacrifice, meaning you do not have to sacrifice um, anything in order to, um, to know God and to know your true self, which is a, 
an, a, an amazing idea and and um, it's not quite it's not your traditional Christianity you know it's it's something else um, Ken Wapnick um, often said that uh, atonement is not at one minute you know a lot of people do that um, atone the atonement principle is um, essentially the idea that the separation from God never happened that we, that we uh, that's an impossibility we've never been separate it could never even happen it was a crazy idea it was the tiny man idea so let's read a little bit if, you know I don't want to um, this is all about actually getting into the course and not just me talking so let's let's read um, section two of chapter two it's called the atonement as defense you can do anything I ask. I have asked you to perform miracles and have made it clear that miracles are natural, corrective, healing, and universal. There is nothing they cannot do, but they cannot be performed in the spirit of doubt or fear. When you are afraid of anything, you are acknowledging its power to hurt you. Remember that where your heart is, there is your treasure also. You believe in what you value. If you are afraid, you are valuing wrongly. And by endowing all thoughts with equal power will inevitably destroy... Sorry. If you are afraid, you are valuing wrongly. Your understanding will then inevitab inevitably value wrongly. And by endowing all thoughts with equal power will inevitably destroy peace. That is why the Bible speaks of, quote, the peace of God which passeth understanding, unquote. This peace is totally incapable of being shaken by errors of any kind. It denies the ability of anything not of God to affect you. This is the proper use of denial. It is not used to hide anything, but to correct error. It brings all error into the light, and since error and darkness are the same, it corrects error automatically. True denial is a powerful protective device. You can and should deny any belief that error can hurt you. This kind of denial is not a concealment, but a correction. Your right mind depends on it. Denial of error is a strong defense of truth, the denial of truth results in miscreation, the projections of the ego. In the service of the right mind, the denial of error frees the mind and reestablishes the freedom of the will. When the will is really free, it cannot miscreate because it recognizes only truth. You can defend truth as well as error. The means are easier to understand after the value of the goal is firmly established. It is a question of what it is for. Everyone defends his treasure and will do so automatically. The real questions are, what do you treasure and how much do you treasure it? Once you have learned to consider these questions and to bring them into all your actions, you will have little difficulty in clarifying the means. The means are available whenever you ask. You can, however, save time if you do not protract this step unduly. The correct focus will shorten it immeasurably. The atonement is the only defense that cannot be used destructively because it is not a device you made. The atonement principle was in effect long before the atonement began. The principle was love and the atonement was an act of love. Acts were not necessary before the separation because belief in space and time did not exist. It was only after the separation that the atonement and the conditions necessary for its fulfillment were planned. Then a defense so splendid was needed that it could not be misused, although it could be refu refused. Refusal could not, however, turn it into a weapon of attack, which is the inherent characteristic of other defenses. 
the atonement thus becomes the only defense that is not a two-edged sword. It can only heal. The atonement was built into the space-time belief to set a limit on the need for the belief itself and ultimately to make learning complete. The atonement is the final lesson. Learning itself, like the classrooms in which it occurs, is temporary. The ability to learn has no value when change is no longer necessary. The eternally creative have nothing to learn. You can learn to improve your perceptions and can become a better and better learner. This will bring you into closer and closer accord with the sonship. But the sonship itself is a perfect creation and perfection is not a matter of degree. Only while there is a belief in differences is learning meaningful. Evolution is a process in which you seem to proceed from one degree to the next. You correct your previous missteps by stepping forward. This process is actually incomprehensible in temporal terms because you return as you go forward. The atonement is the device by which you can free yourself from the past as you go ahead. It, in, it undoes your past errors, thus making it unnecessary for you to keep retracing your steps with it, without advancing to your return. In this sense, the atonement saves time, but like the miracle it serves, does not abolish it. As long as there is need for atonement, there is need for time. But the atonement as a completed plan has a unique relationship to time. Until the atonement is complete, its various phases will proceed in time, but the whole atonement stands at time's end. At that point, the bridge of return has been built. The atonement is a total commitment. You may still think this is associated with loss, a mistake all the separated sons of God make in one way or another. It is hard to believe a defense that cannot attack is the best defense. This is what is meant by, quote, the meek shall inherit the earth, unquote. They will literally take it over because of their strength. A two-way defense is inherently weak precisely because it has two edges and can be turned against you very unexpectedly. This possibility cannot be controlled except by miracles. The miracle turns the defense of atonement to your real protection, and as you become more and more secure, you assume your natural talent of protecting others, knowing yourself as both a brother and a son. Um, I want to mention before we get into this section here, um, I just um, heard that um, there are about 800 some uh, references to the Bible in A Course in Miracles. That's both the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, each section has, I've noticed that there's like maybe three to five references in each of these sections. So this section mentions the peace which passeth understanding, which is in Philippians. Um, it mentions the meek shall inherit the earth, which is um, the, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and it mentions um, one other one here in this section um, that I'm, I'm forgetting what it was. But anyway, it's um, like two or three or five um, references in each little section to, to something in the Bible. And it, again, it's always reinterpreting. Jesus is always reinterpreting the Bible in light of the presentation that he's, that he's giving. Uh, it's a new um, presentation. You know, it's... It's its own unique thing. It's not Christianity per se. It's more a correction for those who would like that. Um, I also learned tonight that Helen, this is according to Ken Wapnick, Helen hated the Bible. <laughs> she loved the King James Bible for its, for its poetry, but um, she couldn't stand... Um, much of it and she was very happy to learn that many scholars believe that um, Jesus didn't actually say a lot of the things that are attributed to him 
in the Bible. And I would like to say that um, I think there's a case to be made that that um, th that maybe it's possible that Jesus did not even exist, or if he did, um, it was you know the the stories were were created after his death. Um, it's possible that he said some things for sure. Um, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to actually, you know, I, I'm, I'm an agnostic in this sense. I, it's very possible that there was a historical Jesus. I highly doubt that, um, that the gospel accounts are, are accurate in terms of what actually happened. But, um, that's a whole nother debate and question. Let's go into this section, the atonement as defense. And um, one thing that Jesus brings up here is um, we, um, first of all, the correct use of denial. Jesus mentions the correct use of denial. There's a correct use. There's a right-minded use. Right-mindedness is used a lot, this phrase of right-mindedness. There's a right-minded use of denial, and there's a wrong-minded there's an egoic use of denial. Egoic use of denial would be to deny, um, basically it's like spiritual bypassing, to deny that we have feelings, that we, that, you know, if you're angry, um, spiritual bypassing would, would be, I'm not angry, you know, I, I don't get angry because I'm very spiritual <laughs> and I don't, you know, I love everyone. I don't, I don't have any hatred or any, um, prejudice or any, you know, um, that, that's a denial of what is actually there. Uh, and, and Jesus is, is actually urging us not to be not in denial in that sense. That's not healthy. And, um, at the, on the other hand though, um, not to be in denial, but also not to to let go of the guilt around those things. And actually to to just to not be in denial actually helps so much because you actually can acknowledge it and say, yes, I do feel this. And I accept that. I don't, you know, I'm not judging myself because everyone has these feelings. You know, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only lonely one. Um, and then the correct use of denial, according to the Course, is the denial of the denial of truth. Um, the denial that anything, that, that you need to be afraid of anything. The denial that, that fear is necessary. Um, the denial um, that, you know, the denial that, that there is any separation from God. That is the correct use of denial. That That is the atonement, is that the separation from God never happened. We are still, we are still there. Our true self is still at home in God. Um, and that would be um, the true correction. And if we, and if we train ourselves, this is where the practice comes in. If we train ourselves to think that way and to, and and to bring that into everything, into all our thoughts and all of our actions, words and actions, um, what will happen is we will we will get back to the goal. And and the, another thing that is said here is that there is a goal. You know, we like to say it's not about the destination; it's all about the journey, which is very true. And there's a lot of truth to that. Um, not to get so caught up in the goal that you. Um, you know, forget about what is happening right here and now in this moment. On the other hand, Jesus is saying that there is a goal. And the, the goal is um, to get back to the oneness with God, to, to, to be back um, home again. So that is the goal. And um, if we want to quicken that, we can. There is a way to do that. And and the way is to follow and trust what Jesus is presenting here and um, to the 
the extent that we don't and we resist it is the extent to which we will um, take our time more. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just like Jesus says in the introduction, you know, the time in which you take it is up to you. Um, and, uh, you know, Jesus is not, is not hurrying you up. He, he has infinite patience, right? And he's, and he's, and he is recommending to us that we have infinite patience with ourselves and with each other. And by having that infinite patience, um, we will, we will be that much closer to the goal because love is infinitely patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, as it, Paul said in Corinthians, we'll look at that at some point. Um, the other point here is that the atonement as a defense, it's not a double-edged sword. Um, it, it can't attack. It can only heal. Um, love really cannot be attacked. Love just is. And love um, is what we truly are. If we, if we um, stay in, in love, um, we do not need to attack anyone. We do not need to attack ourselves. Um, we, we can live in love. And it's possible. And um, we, don't not, we don't have to live in fear. Um, the atonement is the final lesson. After, the, after you realize the atonement, um, you don't have any other lessons, really. And that was that joke, you know, that, and that was from um, um, Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Um, why, why are they called lessons? Because they lessen each day. If you learn your lessons, they lessen each day. Um, the atonement is a total commitment. That's a very important line. The, t the atonement is a total commitment. Um, if you really want it, if you really understand that, that that's all you really want, and that's the only thing that is really of value in, in this whole wide um, universe of se seeming separation, if you really understand that, then um, you will get, get there sooner. If that's what you want, you know, if that's what you're looking for, um, if you t commit yourself totally, then you will, um, you'll get there. Um, and, um, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they, they don't want to make spiritual spirituality a full-time thing <laughs> because, um, but it, but actually when you get on a path like this, it, it does, you know, there's no going back really. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, it, it, we may want to like say, can I just leave the spiritual stuff aside <laughs> and, and, and be normal? Um, but I think that the, really what, what the course is helping us to do is to be very normal and very, um, very down to earth and very, um, just to realize our equality with everyone and to not be, you know, try to be something, uh, different. Um, I think that's good. That was a long video. I, I think that's good for tonight. Um, thank you so much for um, tuning in. And uh, again, I'm always, I'm going to keep saying this. Um, my name is Olawa. Um, our, our channel is called Truly Helpful. If you like the video, any, any of the videos, please like it. Subscribe if you want more. Um, we'd I would love to hear your feedback, your comments. And let me know what you like, what you don't like. And thank you so much.